Yeah, good day YouTubers, Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about the two different raker gauges. The constant depth gauge like this was invented by Joseph Cox in Portland, Oregon in the early 50s and put a worldwide patent on it. And we still sell this type of gauge today. You can see 0.65 there. And what that actually means is that this gauge is designed so that it sits over four teeth and when it sits on top the lowered section of the gauge with a little cut out in it if the raker protrudes you file it so we've got a differential between the point here and this point here of 0.65 millimeters so as this sits over the tooth if the raker uh, protrudes out of this hole you file it off that actually happens for the life of the tooth from this point here being brand new till you get to the end of the life which is exactly seven millimeters and that's what we're going to do here maintain this gap of 0.65 millimeters but what actually happens if this gap here between the top of uh, the highest point of the tooth and the highest point of the raker that gap on a 3-8 chain is approximately six millimeters in length when we file that tooth back it we're roughly filing about seven millimeters we increase this length up to 13 millimeters in length by doing that the pivot point is different and as the tooth moves up and down as it cuts timber it's going to move a lot more when it's another six millimeters past the pivot point by the time you file that tooth right back down in line with the pivot point it's not going to move up and down very much when it strikes timber now to illustrate this concept very hard to find this video i don't know, I can't even remember where i got it from so the video that you're watching at the moment it shows you high speed camera taking a picture of the cutters as they're going through and you can see this rocking motion So this rocking motion bites into the timber and as it goes to kick you can see you can see it kick down so when it kicks down and bites into the timber the raker actually uh, stops it from biting in any further and the process starts all over again so if you're watching the video you find some teeth bite in more than others just just the way it is and that process is just repeated and repeated and repeated so when I talk a little bit further about how this works, this rocking motion, well, you've already witnessed it. So what happens using this gauge is that that rocking motion stays the same, but what changes when you file the tooth, as I said, this part here, get smaller and smaller and it can't take a big enough bite in the next thing that happens is the actual angle that's on the tooth starts off brand new at that angle which is approximately about five degrees as the tooth is filed down this angle decreases it's called attack angle and using this type of gauge you'll get an attack angle of about three. So brand new, we start off at five and we end up at three. Now, five, an attack angle of five is going to give you the best cutting efficiency and an attack angle of three is going to give you, uh, lucky if you've got 60% uh, cutting efficiency so it's going to deteriorate with that type of gauge 
because the angle can't be maintained because we're only keeping 0.65 of a millimeter and as we reduce the tooth length uh, this 0.65 really needs to get uh, much greater than that a man by the name of Ray Carlton in the early 60s developed the progressive depth gauge which worked totally different the progressive depth gauge laid across the top of the tooth the square cutout that you see here sat over the raker and the little legs there went on the end of the uh, tie straps. When you had a, a chain that was brand new, let's just say we're sitting at this angle and by the time that you wear down to the end of the life and seven millimetres being removed, it's going to sit at a lot lower angle. By sitting at a lot lower angle, the rake is going to protrude more through the hole. So using that gauge from a brand new chain, again, we start at five degrees, but we maintain five degrees all the way through till we get to this point here. Now that's on the hard setting. So the hard setting is the one up the top. Down the bottom is the soft setting. If we use the soft setting, we get six degrees and we'll maintain six degrees at end of life. The best cutting efficiency is around six degrees. It's about 6.3 degrees. And this type of gauge will give you that cutting efficiency, which is close to 100%. And that's why it's much better. Now, Husqvarna have had it around for a while. Interesting enough, when Blount, a company called Blount, they purchased Oregon, they purchased Carlton Chain, Ray Carlton put the patent out on the progressive depth gauge in the 60s and put a worldwide patent on it. It was called Philo Plate. You can still buy it today. There's still some stock running around, but not a lot. You can get the same sort of uh, gauge from West Coast Saws. They've got their version of it. This is the stills version, only came out in 2017. And Blount, as soon as they acquired Carlton, they stopped manufacturing that gauge. I'm wondering whether they did that because if you can make your chain last longer, why would you sell one of these gauges? You're shooting yourself in the foot. That's why I think these aren't manufactured and they're not as popular because... The longer the chain lasts, your sales will be down a little bit. And by the time, how many times have you ever heard anybody turn around and say, oh, I brought a, you know, this chain needs to be replaced. It's only about half worn down. I think it's no good. It doesn't cut as good as what it was when it was brand new. Yes, that would be true if you were using this gauge. But that would not be true using this gauge. This gauge will still give you the same efficiency when it was brand new, even when it gets to the end of the life, it'll still have the same performance. I hope you can understand that. If you looked at the video, you would have seen the way that they were, just as the teeth were traveling through, they had that slight little kick and they kicked back because when that bites into the timber, it pushes it down until the actual raker hits the wood. And as I said, you could imagine this distance. If the tooth is worn down to here, you're increasing this gap double. And you're starting to pivot on this point in the center. If you, if you drew a line down here, you're starting to pivot on here. So your movement up and down is much, much greater at this point than it is at that point. And that's why you need to compensate and take off that amount. You'll notice there's a little mark on here. That's the mark that you see on the raker. Uh, now, if this gauge here was designed to remove or to keep the raker at 0.65 of a millimetre, that gap between the highest point of the raker and the highest point of the tooth, it's designed to maintain that at 0.65 all the way to the end of life. 
But when you use this, you start off at 0.65 of a millimetre and you're going to end up taking 1.2 millimetres, double the amount almost. Because of that rocking motion and because when the tooth comes down here, this tooth here won't bite into the timber as good as what it did when it was new compared to when it's down here because of the pivot point it bites in much more because of the movement is much greater at a brand new tooth as opposed to a old tooth. So it bites in a lot more when it's new. As we reduce the length of the tooth, we reduce the cutting efficiency and we need to bring this down accordingly. And that's what happens with this type of gauge. We start off at 0.65 of a millimeter on a brand new and as we decrease we end up to about 1.2 millimeters that is the difference it's almost double 1.3 and you'd be double and as i said ray ray carlton found that out in the uh, 60s and put a worldwide patent on it and that's why a progressive depth gauge is superior so if you live in America for some reason, you can't get these. These are almost, uh, you can't buy these in America at most. Yeah, I don't know why. West Coast stores in America sell their version based on the same patent. Husqvarna sell theirs, again, based on the same patent. It actually looks like a little Lego man if you look at it. Now, I even went to the extreme that understanding this technology quite well i decided to make my own custom made ones not too difficult if you understand mathematics if you look at the hard and you look at the soft setting you'll see that the soft setting is much shorter by a few millimeters so the smaller that profile is the more aggressive it's going to be so that's why it's so easy to make your own if you've got the right equipment so I can custom make my own but I generally don't go any more than about 1.3 millimeters in depth maximum so yeah so that's the way it is uh, you won't find a lot of information even in the patent it doesn't go into a lot of detail hopefully that video that I uh, showed gives you a good insight what I'm talking about, that rocking motion. And, and you can imagine that, and I said it works like leverage. So like a seesaw motion that if I was to hold this and I'm to, to raise this up, obviously at this end, there's more movement from the horizontal position to that position. If you were to measure from there to there, then you're to measure from there to there, well, there's much more movement in the longer section and, and the movement decreases as we come back. So I'm pretty sure that you can understand that, that the longer it is, the more movement. And this is exactly the same principle here. This is much longer by seven millimetres. So it's going to tend to move up uh, more when it's brand new and decline as it comes uh, down to the end of life and that is why 0.65 of a millimeter is uh only good in the beginning and it needs to increase to 1.2 millimeters by the time you get to the end of the life and that's why it's called progressive depth gauge because it slowly progresses and increases as you file this or grind this away till you get back to the end of life Pretty sure I've explained that from A to Z. If there's any comments, uh, anything you'd like to know, uh, please don't hesitate. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.